This one says, it was the best. And then this one says, pray for my anger to go away and it will never come back. So you could also put something you'd like us to pray for, or something you did pray for. But we'll, we read those at the beginning of service. And there's still a bunch of them to go. So we've been talking about worship and act of love. By the way, I'd like to thank you all for um, giving me a Sunday off. I appreciate everybody who filled in to take care of that. Um, we had an amazing time. And I tell you, God's grace. Um, I usually post more pictures, but since you all were in a deluge of God's blessing, of rain coming everywhere, I didn't want to post a bunch of pictures of the beach and be a little bit unkind. But, but I will tell you, here's what God does for people. And, and, and a life of worship allows things like this to happen because when things get thrown at you, instead of going, oh no, what am I going to do? You go, well, you know, God, you must have a better plan. So we got there and we, you have to drive. I got the whole family with me and we drove down to the beach and it takes about eight hours or so. So you're a little tired when you get there because I get up early so we can get there and still have some time. And they gave me the keys to the house we're supposed to have and we go over to the house and there's a car parked there. And I walk up and I go into the house and I knock on the door and no one's there, but I open it just to see it's unlocked. And there's stuff in the house, like shoes on the table, kids clothes. Well, I'm like, hmm, okay. Now, old me, totally honest, old me would have been cursing up a storm right about then. Just, rawr, you know, just rawr, stuff coming out. And I just went, you know what? This is a great place. We've been here before. They're always helpful. I get back in the car. My wife looks at me, what's going on? I said, there's stuff in there. She goes, oh, okay. So we're all just kind of like, oh, okay. So we drive back to the office and I walk in the door with my wife and I said, um, there's a family in the house that we were booked for. And he, he looks at me and you could see this look of terror come over its face, the person there. You can see this going on. And, and he said, could you show me your reservation? And I, and I had it on my phone, so I showed him. And he says, oh, it's from our generic email address. There was no name on it, but it was from their generic. He goes, okay. So this, and I've been in situations like this before. This massive huddle happens in the back office. All these people swarm to the back office, and there's... And they come out, and the guy's kind of, he's trying to smile, and he goes, I think I've got some good news for you. It's okay, cool. And at this point, my wife and I were, hey, we're at the beach. It's, you know, whatever's going to happen. Yeah, we're good. We're good. And it's 75 degrees. It's a little foggy, but it's nice. And he said, we've got an upstairs condo right on the beach that we will, that you can have. It's not being used. So here, you guys go in. He hands me the keys. And it happens to be called the Noah House. And and we get we get a little we're starting to get a little excited. And we're like, wow, really? So then we walk, we get there, and I say, hey guys, check it out. We got a place right on the beach, and the whole family's just shouting. You know, it's like probably the day of Pentecost when they thought they were all drunk. I mean, it was. So got, we get up there. It's got more bedrooms than we originally had. It's got another bed than we originally had. And when you walk out on the balcony, you're looking at the beach. And my wife and I proceeded, because this is just how we are, to go online and figure out how much this place should have cost. And what we paid for those five days we had at the beach would have basically, this would have used up in a day and a half. 
and they and and the place we had didn't have a washer dryer this one had a washer dryer so I share that not because I'm just so special God just likes me so much I share that because that's the kingdom of God you're ready to settle for this and he says no no this is what you're entitled to you're ready to say, oh, this is good enough. And he says, no, 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 not for my kids. This is what you're entitled to. So just a reminder, you're children of the king. And thus, you're entitled to all the privileges of the kingdom. Amen? Amen. So thank you again for... I'm going to do a plug for that entity too. It's called Laguna Beach Christian Retreat and it's in Laguna Beach, Florida, just north of Panama City. They're amazing people. If you're looking for a place to go and you're willing to be patient um, with them, they'll always work it out and it's a, it's a great place. And the beach there, it's more of a private beach than the public beach because their stuff are houses they own. So a lot of the stuff is private right there. So it's really cool. Take your family and go. And um, amen. Thank you, God, for a lifestyle of worship. Because, you know, I could have defused that whole thing. You think about it for a minute. I mean, we've done it before, right? I could have lost it, been a total jerk, which would not be uncharacteristic. Some of you have met me on a bad day. I could have, but it just felt like God's got this. And then I began to see the news about what was going on here and everything. And so we just started praying and praying and praying. So thank you for those of you who, who had prayed for the building and prayed for protection and prayed for the families. Um, thank you so much. Um, this place, the entire floor was baptized. The walls have been baptized. And, uh, and start praying now for a roof because we're going to have to, it looks like we're going to have to do something with our roof if we want to continue to do this. So, amen. God's got it. I'm not going to freak out. This is the miracle ministry. Things always work out. And uh, yeah, you know that from experience going way back. <laughs> yeah. So it's God. And here's, here's the thing. It says this in John, uh, first or second John, one of them. It says, love covers a multitude of sins. What's that mean? Well, that means if we make love our primary language to other people, we know we're going to mess up. Okay, I, I'll just do this. If you, if you know you're going to mess up, raise your hand. All right. All right. If you're not, you're just not listening to me. That's okay. Because you know you're going to mess up. Um, so since we know we're going to mess up, if we make love our primary language, there's lots of grace. There's lots of grace. If we're always thinking, how can I bless? How can I encourage? How can I be a blessing? I know there's all kinds of things out there we've got to face and all kinds of struggles we have. And life is difficult and people are hard. And But if we just keep looking, how can I be a blessing? How can I be encouraging? One of the things I did early on in my in my um, faith was because I was a little uncomfortable. I hadn't grown up in a Christian culture. Um, I didn't always know what to do. So one of the things I did is I'd always look around for something to do. Like I'd come into a, a oh, nobody's doing that. I could, and it gave me something to focus on. So I'd look around and go, oh, nobody's doing that. I can help with that. Well, I soon found out I had to say, I had to learn to say no to a few things because you get the reputation. Oh, Matt will help with anything. It's like Mikey, he'll eat anything. Yeah, but I had to, I had to learn. But one of the ways I helped myself through some of that discomfort and that social inadequacy and the feeling kind of odd because I didn't grow up in a Christian environment and and I had so much stuff and and I just looked for things that I could help with, and they started using me and and saying we want you to do this and and I remember the first time they came to me um, at the church I had plugged into and they knew me I'd, I'd confessed everything I'd said what I had been up to and they said we want you to teach one of these adult seminars and you go ahead and pick the topic and I'm like 
what? I said, no, you'll, you'll be fine. And, and I think I actually got laughed at by a few people because I was packing my Bible around everywhere because I was studying because I wanted to, you know, study to show yourself approved. I wanted to share something that was valuable. And the Lord said, share something that's helpful for you. And that's what I did. And, and people actually showed up and thanked me. And I was amazed. That was my first taste of, of actually teaching in front of people. The good stuff, anyway. Amen. So, is there anything else I was thinking? I already shared. I, I gave you guys the stuff about the seminar. The seminar on Monday from 5 to 7. And if it's like this, maybe we could pick them up. If it's if it's really wet like this, if you, if there's, it's raining. It's supposed to not rain tomorrow, so we'll let you walk. But if it's raining, we could probably pick you up. And... I guess that's it. So, so worship, so we're going to go on to worship is an external activity. And I've hidden the other slides, so you should be able to just flip past. Boom. Yes. All right. So, First Chronicles 29.20. Then David said to the whole assembly, praise the Lord your God. So they all praised the Lord, the God of their fathers. They bowed low and fell prostrate before the Lord and the King, the Lord and King. Psalm 103.1. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my innermost being, praise his holy name. Worship should be a presentation of our heart, soul, mind, and strength slash body to the Lord. So we don't ask you to stand as a religious exercise. We ask you to stand to help you with their posture of getting into worship. Around here, we're not all about have to. We're all about get to. It's not about, oh, I have to do this. It's about I get to do this. This is what I get to do. So we, we, are, we are interested in helping you develop a lifestyle of worship so you can actively express God in the midst of the storms you go through, in the midst of the difficulties you experience, in the midst of the tough stuff. Because think about this. If you get thrown something difficult... And our tendency is, mine anyway, you might be like me, tendency is to walk off and go, oh, son of a... I mean, you start talking like Yosemite Sam. Rasa fratten, written, 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 written. And, and, but what happens? Think about the posture. You're looking down. You're feeling down. What happens? You start to hunch your back. You start to... Grit your teeth. You start, and I, I had this happen. I had, I was going to work on Friday morning and someone I know, someone I work, I don't work directly with him, but I know who he is because he drives a specific kind of vehicle and I know the vehicle and totally cut me off on the freeway to work. And, and, you know, and not really cut me off, almost ran over me actually. Um, He's got a really fast car and likes to go really fast in early morning in the wee hours when we're traveling to work. Anyway, and I, my first response was, and I'm like, I'm going to get to work and I'm going to take a picture of his license plate and I'm going to anonymously send it to the Franklin Police Department and I'm going to call him and say, this person's dangerous and here's when he's on the road. And I get through this whole train of thought in my mind and I'm just going and going, you know, it's just, you can feel it. You're like, and then the Holy Spirit's like, are you going to stop now? And praise God, that all happens in about like, it's like God extends that time, you know, like he extended the day when, when Moses held his hands up and the Israelites needed more time or when Joshua was battling the Amalekite. Yeah, I think so. And, he, and, he need, and God extended the day so they could be victorious. So God extends this moment in my car and I go through this whole scenario and the Holy, when I'm finally there and the Holy Spirit says, are you done yet? Are you going to carry that crap all the way to work? Or what? And I started breathing. And then I said, 
wait, Jesus, you told me to pray for those who hurt me, who despitefully use me. And it's not somebody necessarily come up and beating you, but it, so I started praying for that person. I said, I prayed safety over them. I prayed that they would begin to know, you know, that they would really feel the Lord's presence and, 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 and just keep, and it kept coming back, keep them safe, keep them safe, keep them safe and don't let them hurt anyone else. But as I started praying, my heart changed. And my car became a place of worship. And, and it became a place of peace. And by the time I got to work, because I was ready, I was going to go up and tell him what it was all about and then some. Where he could go and how to get there. And he could go there as fast as he wanted. <laughs> but... But my, my attitude became worship. And suddenly it was no longer on that person. It was on the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was about how to bless that person and encourage that person. And, and several other things that could have really bothered me about that day just kind of washed away. Just wasn't an issue. So... In Psalm 103, David's really commanding himself. He's saying to himself, all right, come on, let's worship. All of me, let's worship. Yeah, all that crud I got to pack around, all that stuff, having to live in caves, having to hide from Saul, having to, having to, to um, be mocked by my brothers, having to, all this stuff I've had. You know what? We're going to praise. And you know what David's house, David became? David's house becomes God's favorite house of worship. Think about this. Solomon created all this amazing visual effect for the, for the temple. And gold and silver and pillars and, and um, cedar wood and all the, and just everything. And it said that their banquets were massive and lavish and, and, and God blessed him and increased his borders and it was all amazing. But when you look in the New Testament, David is the one after God's own heart. Why? Solomon, as far as human could say, he made Israel probably the greatest nation of that time and that day. David was a shepherd boy. But what did David know? David knew that no matter where he was, no matter what was going on, that he could trust and worship the Lord. And because of him, we have a whole book of psalms to sing to help us with depression, discouragement. You want to deal with things like depression? Worship God. Get your mind off your circumstance and get your mind on his situation and his circumstance. It's active. You know, we had, a, we had a few things happen today that kind of ran us a little long. I think I'm going to stop there. We're going to keep going with worship. I'll probably keep interrupting it with stuff, but um, um, we're going we're gonna to stop there. I got uh, several more points of worship to discuss, so, you know, that means I just keep going. <laughs> Because yeah, I'll get somewhere on this and then God will go, oh, add this, oh, add this, oh, add this. So, so worship has, is external. It's not just a, a me and my and a quiet corner. That's your prayer place. Worship is get that groove on with God. Get that groove on with God and participate in worship. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we are going to, um, could someone, Cindy, would you mind hitting the stop button? Do you know which one I'm talking about? 
Thank you all for joining us online. We appreciate your prayers. Um, there is a giving button on our Facebook page. Just reminding you, it's out there. Need a roof? Not complaining, not whining, just asking. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to go ahead and do communion. And um, has everybody had the new communion?